Mike, consciousness, this inner feeling of, of personhood, of seeing things, experiencing and know what things feel like and sound like, not, not just a behavioral thing, but an internal thing that I can't describe to any, anyone else is so important in, in, in what makes us ourselves. Philosophers are all over this question. Right. But as a brain scientist, what, what can you say about why this feeling is so baffling? Uh, well, uh, you know, it's hard to, hard to get to. I'm awake, therefore I am, right? Or we can say, I'm anesthetized, therefore I'm not, right? <laughs> uh, you can study it from, from, a, from a lot of directions. And you can study conditions in which I know the consciousness are there, I've generated the quality, and I could say, what phenomena, what parallel phenomena do I see in the brain mm -hmm. that could account for this? So I can develop various correlative arguments. And if you look at the history of, the, of approaches to this issue by neuroscientists, that's what they do. They say, when, when you're conscious, this is happening. When you're not, it's not. This is consciousness. Well, this is, this is thin gruel, right? This yeah. is not really, this is not really a, a well-meated soup, you know? This is not satisfying. Yeah. So, but part, part of it also is a misunderstanding, I think, of, of what is consciousness, to my mind, from a neurological perspective. There is the epiphenomena, the sort of cumulative qualia that represents the, the essence of you, the essence of me. And then there's the person, the person that has a million nuances that come from where your brain has been, that shape and color how you react, how you feel. It's not that you don't feel like a human, it's not that you don't react like every other human on some level, but you're incredibly nuanced by where your brain has been. And all of that coloring is, is grown in your brain. And it's grown in your brain in, in a personal evolution that's occurred within your head during your lifetime. So in that sense, when you think of that being that's there in, in their com incredibly complex nuanced nature, that's a product of, of your plastic brain. And it comes from an incredibly powerful level of self-reference as the brain is organizing its activities in the history of your brain. So, you know, I can understand that. I can understand how all of that coloring, all of that shading, all of those little subtle alterations have occurred, not, not in detail. No one is understandable in detail, in every detail. It's too complicated. Because it comes from billions and billions and billions of moments of self-reference that are variously important or unimportant or in the shadows. And these build up to become the essence of what we feel is, is a simple unity of consciousness. You go to a bar every day, and you associate the familiarity of your tavern with you, and they become part of you. You carry a baby around with you for, for three or four uh, years as you nurse them or care and nurture them. They're literally embodied in your consciousness because they're reference to you. And, and their contact with you is referenced to you. They become part of you. They're part of your consciousness. They're part of the person that you are. They're part of the new, way it's nuanced. And in fact, they're attached to you because they're part of you forever. Right? In the same way that you're attached to your, your tribe. In the same way that you're attached, attached to your house. Gee, I don't want to leave this. In the way that you're attached to your car, your dog, you know. I mean, all of these things grow together and grow into be a part of you because they're powerfully self-referenced to you, right? And so I can understand how all that happens. I can understand how you become the, the incredibly powerfully, new, in, in principle, not in detail, incredibly powerfully nuanced person you are. But in, in principle, what you're saying is that it, it is really improper to think about some concept of consciousness on its own, but rather... Well, you have to have all of these other well, billions of things that have happened that, that are not immediately aware to us, but that what is what is making our consciousness the way it is. Robert, I don't mean to take away the mystery of the light, right? I don't re really mean to take away the well, fact that it, I'm fascinated by how everything Take it, it away is. if it should be taken away. Well, well I'm, <laughs> I'm fascinated by the process that leads to self-awareness. I'm fascinated by the process that accounts for uh, the perceptual quality and its accumulation that ultimately, can, that ultimately contributes to the powers. And I can see my brain generating activities as I remember, as I ideate. I can, I, can, I can basically organize the activities in the brain of a monkey so the monkey has a thought and I can in a sense see the thought in its activities in its brain. So I, can, I understand 
how these things, in a sense, reside in the flesh. On the other hand, there is still the light. There is still the essence. There is still the centered control of complexly distributed processes in a brain that is so strongly centered as the ongoing activities of a person moving in a conscious and acting stream. This center, is that an illusion? Oh, I, well, it's all an illusion, Robert. <laughs> it's all symbolic. It's all a product of the activities of neurons and, and, and their complex chemistry. Well, but, but that's, that's a... That, that, that's I mean, a, that's a throwaway, right? Yeah. So, and it's yeah. a... It, you, you can, it has about as much value as saying it, right? which is little. <laughs> well, but, but, but I, I think you, you can, you, w one way of looking at it is that this center, right. of which you, you mentioned, is, is an illusion. It's just the whatever we're attending to at the minute, we think, it's, we're, we think we have a center, but we really don't. Right. I mean, I don't, I'm not seeing my no. peripheral vision, I, I don't feel my clothes, I'm, I'm interested in what you're saying, I'm focused on that. And I can focus on something else, so it's, a, it's an illusion. The other view is, is that consciousness, is, is, there's, there's a real center that is the, that causes the unity, it's certainly neuronally related in right. some way. Well, what, what uh, I see the unity is arising from incredibly powerful self-reference. So for, for every thought, for every action, for every perception we've ever had, we don't just relate it to the other things that are go with it in the moment in time. All of our memories are recorded in relation to the other things that are happening. We build this incredibly complex array of what goes with what, what's associated with what, what belongs with what. But every time we do that, we do that with every, in every moment, we also reference those activities to the source. The source is us. And we generate this powerful ongoing reference to source. I think that is the basis of the centering, right? As we move across the, 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 the activity, activity rolls across our brain, it has a very stable, incredibly powerfully constructed continuous reference to the source. The source is embodied because we have an incredibly rich, uh, 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 history of inputs that come from our hide, and ultimately the, the source is referenced to the limits of our hide. But, but the, the 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 center that we feel is the is the eye that right. that, that has all of these things right. flowing right. into it. Right, right. That is the result of billions of different self references over our our, our life that that. That kind of congeal into this. But we center? know that when you when you train a, a brain, that 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 A goes with B. That the brain actually physically changes. It actually mm -hmm. plastically mm -hmm. changes mm -hmm. to strengthen the relationships of A's and B's. Mm -hmm. We know that it actually records that by fit, by changes in physical activity, by connection strengths in brains. For mm -hmm. God's sake, mm -hmm. it does that with an incredible, a, a, an unbelievable array of things in the world. It does that over and over and over again with reference to self with ourself as the source of action. And I think this is the essence of the origin of this centering action and the control of our kind. But still doesn't, not, still, I still don't mean to account for the light. I still don't mean that if you move, if that these processes of themselves satisfactorily explain to me uh, why I am aware, exactly. You know, I can't see the process accounting for awareness. I mean, scientists often ask the question, well, if I could create a machine that did everything my brain mm -hmm. would do, you know, would that machine be aware? My intuition is, is that if it was created perfectly, it would be. But maybe it's not constructible. Maybe we don't know enough and won't know enough for a while yet to construct such a machine. But the, and maybe we do. But the key concept is, in principle, you think that such a machine, perfectly constructed, could be conscious. Uh, yes, absolutely. But but uh, how can I be sure? I mean, I'm a scientist. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm natively and in, intrin intrinsically insecure about it. Well, yeah. some some scientists would say, sure, I'm sure because I'm 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 absolutely sure there's only a material world. There cannot possibly be anything else, and 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 uh, there's nothing magical about neurons if we can construct it in some way. Maybe it's going to take ten thousand years, or maybe a million years, but eventually we'll, well do it. Well, you know, now we're, we're now we're going from science, which 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 deals with demonstrated fact, I, you know, hypothetically, <laughs> and 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 demonstrated. Demonstrated truth and proof, right? I mean, I, I think I, if you ask me if I would predict a result, the result would be the machine would be conscious, right? 
If you ask me whether I would bet my house on it, I'd probably bet my house on it. <laughs> if you ask me if there's a probability that I could lose, <laughs> Well, of course, there's always a probability I can lose. I, we live in, I mean, we're limited creatures in our ability to use our powers of reason and our organization of thought and information to understand, completely understand what this is all about, right? <laughs> and I'm, I'm in the struggle with everyone else. I have strong opinions about it, but, but uh, you know, we live, a, a, a good scientist, I think, should live with a level of insecurity about all such matters. 